I mean, I love Zurich deeply, you know, it's like my city. And uh, I spent so many formative years here. Every corner of this place, I have a memory, you know, I mean, Dinamo, I mean, please, you know, this, this is a place I spent a lot of time in, you know. Zurich cannot compete in size with any of its neighbors of so Paris, London, Berlin or whatever you want to. But uh, Zurich has this extreme concentration of, of, uh, of greatness in a, in, a, in a small kind of footprint. I like it because it's still at human level and it has a size that is manageable. The so-called wide 80s, the Bewegung of the 80s, was more on a political level, the way I perceived it, than on a kind of social kind of transformation. This came later, because the high peak of the Bewegung was in the early 80s. I was part of that later generation where we realized that, I mean, this is such a corseted society where everything is so clearly organized, public space is regulated, socializing is all kind of in a, it has to be, you know, liberated somehow. So we started a very illegal program of, you know, infecting the city with some, some life. And uh, I was part of this group of, uh, I called it social designers, you know, uh, called Parfumery. We started with the first illegal parties, occupying spaces. It was like a post that time that we realized how much needs to be done and how much the people who live in Zurich are thirsty of, you know, diversity and also how much we are fed up to go back home at midnight because everything was closing at midnight. And it was really... Uh, a non-organized, beautiful, uh, inspiring and energetic chaos. I have to say that my failed proposal, I have to say, for Manifesto 11 that took place in Zurich, my idea was really to depart exactly, to depart from that spectacular kind of uh, art tourism a city like Zurich that is considered as this uber clean, uber safe, uber, uber, uber everything kind of place, whereas Zurich has more, you know, folds than that, has more cracks than that, you know, and has a history of a, a lot of, you know, activism. And I also wanted to look at all these mythologies of, you know, neutrality, of hospitality and conflict resolution, of, you know, the iconic landscape, you know, which Switzerland benefits also a lot of. But it's not man-made. I mean, it's, it's not Swiss people who made the Alps, you know what I mean? <laughs> Something that I admire about Switzerland and the Swiss mentality is really how smart this country is. Smart in the way to get away with a lot. <laughs> you know?